All right, we're working up to doing a um, project on drawing monsters, and we're going to do um, a lot of different things to kind of prepare for that. One of the things that we're going to do is work on organic shape and texture. So what we want to do is just kind of first draw a simple basic organic shape, basically some kind of amoeba-like thing, and we're going to subdivide it. And you can pick how you're going to subdivide it. Um, basically, what you need to do is just wrap a few lines about, you know, half inch, three quarter inch apart. And just keep wrapping those, describing the form as you go along. And then you're going to go the other direction. And you don't need that many subdivisions on um, on the long side. Um, you're you're trying to create a grid, and your grid should be um, a reasonable size. And you're gonna follow the form as you see it, or as you create it. And remember, these grid spaces are going to get really small when you get out to the edge. So you just follow along the contours. And you can do this really lightly, and that's probably going to be the most effective way. Um, so what I want you to do as a, um, a sort of a preparatory uh, project is do um, about like... 10 to 20 of these. And you can go kind of quickly with them. I'm kind of going a little bit slowly because, um, you know, I'm doing this kind of in one take, but your forms can, they can be any kind of shape. They can be complicated. They can be uncomplicated. They can be kind of more, you know, fruit shaped, like a pear or something. As long as it's organic, it's valid to do. And then you can imagine not just one direction of form change, but that the forms change direction. So this form's going back, and then this one's coming forward, and then it's going back here, and then it's going back and back, and then this one's coming forward and bulging back the other direction. So you can do more complicated things with these forms, and as you um, sort of, and then you can grid them out accordingly, right? And you can kind of work out how these grid lines work. They don't necessarily have to go the entire length of the form when you do this. It just depends on, on how you create. So I would recommend doing the short crossing lines first and then coming back and doing the long ones. That'll make it easier for you. The second component of, of doing this, um, this assignment is to create a bunch of texture studies. And I want you to create just a big variety of them. And what you're going to do is create a little bar, about one by four inches. You can measure it out if you want. You don't have to. I'm not so concerned with that. I'm more concerned with what goes on inside this texture. Then you're going to subdivide into a few sections. And in each section, we're going to do something slightly different. So I'm using sort of an alligator, a fake alligator skin texture thing as a reference. And I'm going to be able to take this texture and wrap it around on these grids later. Um, and we're going to do a separate demo for that. So I'm going to subdivide this square a little bit, kind of casually. Subdivide this one, maybe with some different sizes, because this alligator stuff is all different sizes. Then I'm going to do some smaller divisions. Then some kind of randomly divided up really small divisions. And then I'm going to go through and then begin to create kind of the alligatory texture, which is kind of a little bit rounded, a little bit squared off. Um, organic, it doesn't necessarily meet up in every place. And I'm going to sketch in uh, real lightly first, because I have some decisions to make as I go along, and I don't want to commit to anything too early. So this is I'm still in my sort of texture sketch phase, right? I'm going to come in, do some smaller ones, make sure they're not all perfectly regular sizes. 
I can kind of ignore some of the subdivisions that I made if I want. And then I'm getting to the phase where I need to do kind of transition into the smaller ones. So here I can start to transition into the into the small. So I'm doing some small subdivisions. And what I'm thinking about when I do these subdivisions is kind of leading them into each other in interesting ways. So that they create these interesting patterns. Now what I want to do is create transitions from left to right in this texture. Because this texture is going to show up in, it's in three different places on this object. The object is going to have a light side, a medium side, and a dark side. And I want to see how that texture operates in light, medium, and dark. And then what I've also done is I've created a a um, a big, medium, and small version of each texture, so I can explore the relationships of big, medium, small, dark, medium, and light, and um, how they could potentially operate on this texture. And you know, as I'm as I go through, what I'm going to do is I'm going to light this, and then I'm going to apply a texture. And so this texture is going to also have to be affected by lighting. So I have to figure that out. So what I kind of do is just imagine that there's light coming from a particular direction on this texture and figure out how that might operate. So I can start in on the dark side. I can imagine that this is going to be all in darkness. And between the textural elements, that's going to be very deep, dark, and shadowy. So I can go through and kind of quickly put deep, dark shadows in there. And since I'm drawing in the negative spaces, I kind of have to um, figure out my shape as I come as I as I come along through here, and make sure that I'm not destroying any of the shapes that I want to create with this. Make sure that I'm not leaving anything out either. That's important too. Then I'm going to go through, and then I'm going to start to transition to medium. So I'm going to take that super dark and carry that out into this um, into the edge of this next uh, sort of section of the bar. And I'm going to start going into more of a like core or tone rather than the full dark. Um, and I'm going to start to think, well, maybe this is going to have a little bit of light on it. These little pieces of texture. Then by the time I get over here, there's definitely going to be light happening, and so I have to change the way that I apply things. So now I have to think this texture is raised a little bit, right? And if I have light coming on it, it's going to cast a shadow, and then this section of texture is going to be raised. So this section is going to be dark, and this section is going to be light. So I need to start to think, well, over here there's going to be a dark bit, and then it's going to be light, on this side, then these are probably going to have some darks on this side. So I'm going to have these kind of like, since this is a little bit squared off, I'm going to have these little L things going on. So I'm going to catch the light inside this groove before it hits here. So I'll probably get like a highlight right on this corner, you know? So that'll be like the pure white. And as I go into this last one where it's going to be absolute light, I'm still going to have that effect, but I'm not going to use a very dark value on that edge. I'm going to keep it pretty light. So now what I have to do is, is darken in what's going on in the texture itself. So over here, I'm going to put some tone over the entire texture. And then maybe on this particular edge, I might leave just little teeny bits of light. Over here, I'm going to basically cover them as I transition in. I'm going to leave some light on some of the texture. And then here, I'm just going to leave it mostly transitioning. So I'm going to use increasing light. And then here, I'm just going to use little bits of halftone. And maybe here, I'll just hint at a little halftone. And so what I've done is I've created 
a transition from dark, medium, light, and big, medium, small uh, over this texture bar. So now I kind of know how this texture is going to look when I wrap it around something, and I know what it's going to look on the light side if the texture is big, and so on. So um, again, I want you to create like five to ten textures. Um, you don't necessarily have to do a different texture for every object, though that would be pretty cool. Um, but I want you to get a sense of how this is going to operate. And then in uh, part two of this, we're going to figure out how to overlay this texture. And we're going to talk about how the texture itself is dimensional and changes the outer contour of these forms. So that's it for now. We'll continue on a little bit later.